I'm the same zip code that the that the road is in. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Moving on بإذن الله عز وجل we want to move on to the فضل الدعوة إلى الله والحث عليها والثناء على قائمين بها The excellence of da'wah to Allah Ta'ala encouraging da'wah and the praise for those who establish or establishing the da'wah who are involved in da'wah the Shaykh, he says that there are many evidences, there are many proofs, many clear verses in the Qur'an and many ahadith that are indicative of the excellence of da'wah, explaining the lofty status of da'wah and the people of da'wah and the raising of their ranks in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Fusilat, ayah 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّا دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That who is better in speech? Who is better in speech? Who is better than one who goes around talking? Than the one who is inviting others to Allah Ta'ala and righteous actions. And righteous actions. Doing righteous actions at the same time. And he says that indeed I am from most of the Muslims. Of course this ayat here, this is al-istifham huna lit-taqreer. Even though it is a question, it is actually establishing the fact that لا أحد أحسن قولا مما دعين الله That there is no one that is better in speech, who is involved in speaking, involved in speech, involved in speaking and talking to others than the one who is inviting the people to Allah. And this is very important when we keep seeing da'wah and da'wah and da'wah that Allah Ta'ala is mentioning a da'wah ilallah that the call is to Allah to attach the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. And to attach the people to the methodology and the procedure and the way of drawing near to Allah and worshipping Allah to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the da'wah. The da'wah is to Allah. And we find today that many people have excluded Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger from the da'wah. The da'wah is to other than Allah. The procedure and the methodology is other than the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Shaykh, he goes on and he says, إِلَى اللَّهِ بِتَعْلِيمُ الْجَاهِلِينَ وَوَعَدِ الْغَافِلِينَ وَالْمُعْرِضِينَ وَمُجَادَلَةِ الْمُبْطِلِينَ وَقَامَ بِالْأَمْرِ بِإِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ بِجَمِيعًا وَعِهَا وَالْحَثْ عَلَيْهَا وَتَحْسِينِهَا مَحْمًا أَمْكَن and one is calling to Allah by teaching the ignorant people. Huh? Teaching the ignorant people. Not just leaving the people saying they're ignorant, we don't want to deal with them. We don't go over there, we don't deal with them. You know? But the people are ignorant. Teaching the ignorant people. Admonishing the people who have become heedless and have turned away from Islam and turned away from the worship of Allah and turned away from the sunnah admonishing them no and having healthy argumentation and debate with the people of falsehood and establishing the command of the worship of Allah wa ta'ala in all of its aspects and encouraging that and beautifying that to the best of one's ability And prohibiting people from that which Allah Ta'ala has prohibited. This is something that is very important. Al Hassan al Basri rahimahullah Ta'ala recited this ayah Waman Ahsan wa kawlan mimman da'a ilallah ilallah wa amila salihan wa kala inna ni minal muslimin. Al Hassan al Basri rahimahullah Ta'ala, the tabi, he recited this ayah. And who is best in speech than the one who is inviting to Allah and doing righteous actions, saying that I am from amongst the Muslims? He recited this ayah, then he said, Hada Habibullah, Hada Waliullah, Hada Safwatullah, Hada Khiratullah, Khiratullah, Hada Ahabu Ahalul Ardi ilallah, Ajabullah Vidawatihi, 
ودع الناس إلى ما أجاب الله فيه من دعوته وعمل صالحا وفي إجابته وقال إنني من المسلمين هذا خليفة الله الحسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى he says and Ibn Kathir has mentioned this in his tafsir after reciting this ayah who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah he says this is the Habib of Allah this is the one who is beloved by Allah Ta'ala this is the Wali of Allah this is the close friend of Allah this is the Safwatullah this is the most choices Wakhiratullah this is the one who is from the exclusive choice chosen servants of Allah Ta'ala this is the most beloved of the people of earth of the earth to Allah Ta'ala this is the one who has answered the call of Allah Ta'ala in his da'wah and responded to the command of Allah Ta'ala this is the one who has invited the people to respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do righteous actions. He is doing righteous actions in his response to Allah and he says that I am from amongst the Muslims. This is the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth. The Shaykh, he says, there is no doubt that this is a praise, this, extre- this, this far-reaching praise for this individual here is something that is very important. And this is something that يُحَرِّقُ nufus إِلَى الدَّعْوَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالْقِيَامِ بِهَا عَلَىٰ أَحْسَنِ وَجْهِ This is something that will encourage and move the souls towards da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establishing it in the best of manners. Allah ta'ala, He says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمِنْ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنْ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah ta'ala says, Say, O Messenger of Allah, this is my straight path. I invite to Allah Ta'ala based upon knowledge I and whoever follows me and how free of Allah Subhanahu how free is Allah Ta'ala away from any imperfection and I am not from amongst the people of shirk. The Shaykh says fi hadhihi al-aya ikhba' al-ikhbar bi anna as-sabil an-nabiy al-karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa maslakahu wa tariqahu wa kadhalika man ittaba' man ittaba'ahu bi ihsan huwa ad-da'wa ila shahadati أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له على بصيرة من الله ونور وبرهان. That the methodology of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the way of Allah تبارك وتعالى, the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, his methodology, his path, and likewise the path of those who follow him in da'wa is calling to the shahada of لا إله إلا الله without any shirk, based upon knowledge from Allah, based upon knowledge of Allah تعالى and in light. Allah Ta'ala also says, وَدْعُوا أَعُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْئِذَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَةِ And also in another ayah in the Quran, in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah Ta'ala he says, and invite to the path of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching and argue with them in the way that is best. Allah Ta'ala also says, وَدْعُوا إِلَى رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Invite the people to your Lord and do not be from the people of shirk. And that is in Surah Al-Qasas, Ayat 87. And all of these ayahs here, Allah Ta'ala continues to say and invite to Allah, and invite to your Lord, and call to Allah, and call to your Lord. He never said call to anything else. He says, فَذَقْرَ الدَّعْوَ إِلَيْهِ وَالدَّعْوَ إِلَى سَبِيلِهِ Allah mentioned in these verses the call to him and the call to his path. لِيَنَّ الدَّاعِيَ الَّذِي يَدْعُوا غَيْرَهُ إِلَىٰ أَمْرٍ لَا بُدَّ فِي مَا يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَمْرَيْنِ Because the person who is inviting someone else to something, he's inviting someone else to an affair, it is most important and certainly in that which he is calling them to, is going to involve two affairs. It's going to involve two affairs. أَحَدُهُمَا One of them is المقصود المراد What is it that he's calling to? What is the intent? What is the objective? As we mentioned previously. And secondly, Al-Wasilatu wa tariq al-Musil ila al-Maqsood. And the way and the methodology and the path that will allow a person to arrive at the objective. So when a person is calling the people to Allah Ta'ala, there are two things involved. Your, one thing is the objective and the intent. What are you calling to? And the other thing is the actual methodology and approach that is going to allow you to arrive and achieve and arrive at that goal and that objective. This is something right here that is neglected. Right, Sheikh Dawu? Calling to Allah. Some people may be calling to Allah. I'm calling to Allah. Okay, but what is the methodology? What is the procedure? What is the means in which you are calling to Allah in which you want the person to arrive at this objective? 
He says, لِهَذَا يَذْقُرُ الدَّعْوَى تَرَّةً إِلَى اللَّهِ وَتَرَّةً إِلَى سَبِيلِهِ فَإِنَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ الْمَعْبُودَ الْمُرَادُ الْمَقْصُودُ بِالدَّعْوَى So, in, in one case, Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned da'wah to Allah. And in another time, and sometimes he mentioned da'wah to his path. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the object of servitude. He is the object of worship. He is the one that is the objective and the intent behind da'wah. Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَلْتَقُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْءُ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنُ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah Ta'ala says, let there be amongst you those people who are inviting the people to good. And who are forbidding them from the munqa. These are those who are successful. And there are many ayat that encourage, there are many hadith that encourage the people to call. وَحَاقَتَ السُنَّةَ النَّبَوِيَّ وَرَدَ فِيهَا أَحَدِيثُ كَثِيرَةٌ دَالَةٌ عَلَى فَضْلِ الدَّعْوَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِذَمِ ثَوَابِ الدَّعِينَ إِلَيْهِ And there are many ahadith that point to the fact and encourage calling to Allah and the, and the great reward of the people who call to Allah. It comes in Sahih Muslim when he thought of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, who said, the Prophet said, مَنْ دَلَّ عَلَى خَيْرٍ فَلَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِ فَاعِلِهِ That whoever calls to good and invites to good, then he will have the same reward as the one who does it. This is sufficient enough right there. Whoever calls to good will have the reward sufficient enough from the one who does it. And then we also have the famous hadith collected by Imam Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib that the Prophet ﷺ said to him, فَوَاللَّهِ لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَقَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النِّعْمِ That by Allah, that if Allah Ta'ala guides one man by way of you, it's better for you than the red camels. It's better for you than the red camels. Tell you. So these are, this is the importance of da'wah. It's the reality of da'wah, the ruling of da'wah, and the virtues of da'wah. Who can just tell me one thing from the importance of da'wah? One thing. It can be very brief. From the importance of da'wah. Bring success for the people who is given to, the people that are calling and the people who accept. What is the reality of da'wah? Haqiqatul da'wah. Something from the reality of da'wah. Hmm? We forgot that fast? Hmm? Okay. Alhamdulillah. What is the what is the ruling of da'wah? What is the ruling? Wajib, fard, fard, ayn, fard, kifaya. Fard, kifaya. With more of a detailed explanation though, right? Yeah, it's still fard, kifaya, but it's also for those who are not with the ability and it's extra sunnah more effort. Tell What about the virtues, excellence of da'wah? We just finished that. Actually, yeah. Actually, for the one who's giving it, there's much reward for him as it is to those whom he's giving it to. Okay. There you go. We want to move on now to now we say the meat and potatoes of the intent here today. We want to get into the practical application of da'wah. The practical application of da'wah beginning with asnaf ul madu'uween the different types and classes of the people that are that da'wah is given to. The different types and classes of people in which da'wah is given to. At the head of these different types of people that da'wah is given to, of course, there are two main Groups, two main classes of people. All right? They're at the head. So if you were to draw a diagram and you were to put it on paper, the two heads would be who? Ahlul Islam wa Ahlul Kufr. Right? And branching off from this will become will come the different other classes of people. For most of the people of Kufr, they're going to be different types. Different types of Kufar. Right? 
from the people of Islam that are to be called want to be different types of people, different classes, different types. Okay? As sinful awwal, the first class at the head of these people to be called is Ahlul Islam. الَّذِينَ قَابِلُوا هَذَا الدِّينَ وَخَضَعُوا لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The people who have accepted the religion and they have submitted to Allah. وَآمَنُوا بِرَسُولِهِ الْكَرِيمِ And they have believed in the Messenger. This is the people of Islam. وَيُعْرَفُونَ بِأُمَّةِ الْإِجَابَةِ And they are known by way as the Ummah of الْإِجَابَةِ What do we mean by Ummah الْإِجَابَةِ the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Ummatan. Ummatu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummatani. You follow? Listen. The Ummah of Muhammad is two Ummahs. Sheikh Dawood, two, right? Right, Sheikh Abdul Hakim? The Ummah of Muhammad is not one. Do we agree that these people who are walking around us right now, these non-Muslims that we see outside these windows, do we agree that they're from the Ummah of Muhammad? No. They are, right? No. Dawood, they're from the Ummah of Muhammad? I can't hear you. Say, say I can't hear you, Shaykh. Yes. They are, right? Yes. Did you say something else after that? No, That's right. Right, Khalid? Right. right? Everyone that existed during the time of the sending of the Prophet all the way up until the establishment of the hour are from the Ummah of Muhammad. Right? As it comes in authentic hadith, ما يسمع بي من أمتي يهوديا أو نصرانيا ثم لم يؤمن بي أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that there is no one who hears about me ما يسمع بي من أمتي from my أمة whether they be a Jew or a Christian and then they did not believe in me except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter them in the fire in this hadith here the Prophet said my أمة يهوديا أو نصرانيا Jew or Christian so he included them in his أمة right وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا And we have sent to every ummah right, a messenger. So this ummah here, and this nation of people who are living, who have been living before us, after the bi'atha, after the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until the established of the hour, they're from the ummah of Muhammad. But they're divided into two types, two divisions. Ummatu al-ijaba wa ummatu ish al dawa we are Ahlul Islam, Ummatul Ijaba, the Ummah who have responded to the message and the call of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to worship Allah alone. Ahlul Islam, Ummatul Ijaba, the Ummah that has responded to the call. And the, those who have not believed, did not believe before us. And have not believed yet amongst us, Hadahumullah. They are known as Ummatu Dawah, the Ummah of a Dawah. Meaning they're the people who are to be invited. They're the Ummah, the part of the nation that is being invited. We have responded, they've still been invited. They've been given the invitation. We have accepted the invitation, right? And we have presented ourselves as present. Or the sabiq bil khayrat, mufradan. The individual who is sabiq bil khayrat. The second level is muqtasid. The sabiq bil khayrat is at the highest. Under him or under her is the muqtasid or muqtasida. Is the person that is muqtasid. Muqtasid. That is at a level below. As-sabiq bil-khayrat. 
Below that is ظالمٌ لنفسه So we have the one who, at the highest level, سَبِقٌ بِالْخَيَاءَ The one who we say it is forerunners or foremost in establishing goodness within themselves and others. مُقْتَسِب is the one who, the مُقْتَسِب in the second level for English, the مُقْتَسِب is the one who is in between both of these two. The مُقْتَسِب is the one who establishes that which is wajib and abandons and abandons that which and stays away from what it is that Allah Ta'ala for the most part has commanded them to stay away from. The muqtasid is the one who basically does what is required of them. Sabiqun bil khayrat is the people who do what, do what is required of them and beyond that. Muqtasid is the one who does al wajibat wa tarikul manhiyat. He does what is an obligation and he stays away from what are the major prohibitions. Zalimun li nafsihi is of the third grade or rank, which is below. مقتصد. And these are the people who have committed or they commit sins, major sins, but of course they repent to Allah Ta'ala. And the proof for this, there is a verse in Quran so that you can, you can go back and you'll be able to really look at this. And that is, which is in Surah Fatir. Ayah 32. Well, Allah Ta'ala says, ثم عرثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكريم. There's a beautiful ayah. And then we cause to inherit the book those who we chose from amongst our servants. For amongst them are those who are ظالمون لنفسه Those who wrong their own souls. They commit the major sins, but they repent. And then there are those who are مقتصد Those who do what is wajib upon them. And they stay away from the major prohibitions. And then there are those who, who are سابقون بالخيرات They are forerunners in goodness. In establishing that which is wajib. That which is مستحبات. Right? By the permission of Allah, and that is the fadl, a noble, generous favor from Allah Ta'ala upon them. وَجَمِيُهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ And all of them are from the people of Jannah. All of them. Even the people who are known as ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِ All of them are from the people of Jannah. And this is why Allah Ta'ala, He goes on and He says in the next ayah, جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهَا يُهَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَاللُّؤْلُؤَ وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيرٍ And it is a jannah, jannah to adin, in which they will dwell in it, and they will wear bracelets of gold, and lu'lu'a, and what is this? Pearls. And their libas, their clothing will be silk. All of them. إِلَّا أَنَّ السَّابِقَ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ وَالْمُقْتَسِدَ كِلَاهُمَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Except for the fact that the two first ones, excuse me, the two second ones, the two last ones, or the two first ones as we mentioned, but in the verse, the two last ones, the سَابِقٌ السَّابِقْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ وَالْمُقْتَسِدْ Both of them, will enter Jannah without any reckoning. وَأَمَّا الظَّالِمُ لِنَفْسِهِ فَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ As for the one who has wronged his own soul, then his affair is left up to Allah Ta'ala. إِن شَاءَ ذَبَهُ وَإِن شَاءَ غَفَرَ لَهُ If Allah wills, He will punish him. And if Allah wills, He will forgive him. If He punishes him, then he still will not stay in the hellfire forever. فَهَؤُلَاءِ يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى الثَّبَاتِ عَلَيْهِ 
والتزود منه والبعد أما ينقصه ويخل به كل منهم بحسبه So all of these people are called, are given da'wah to. And the da'wah to them is to what? Remain firm upon Islam. And to prepare and to take one's provisions from the religion of Al-Islam for the hereafter. And to stay away from those things that will diminish and lessen and weaken a person's Islam and Iman. All of them according to their stat, their state or their I mean the state that they are in, their condition. So this is the first of the type of people that are to be called. At the head of them are the Muslim and the non-Muslim. Within the Muslims, there are what? Three classes. Right? And then we have a sinful thani, a sinful thani, ahlul kufr, aw ghayr muslimin. The people of kufr, or we refer to them as non-Muslims. لِأَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَقُنْ مُسْلِمًا فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ Period. Because whoever is not a Muslim, then he's what? A kafir. There's no in-between. And that's because Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّ الدِّينَ إِنْدُ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ The only deen that is accepted by Allah in the sight of Allah is Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَاتِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever chooses and desires a religion other than Islam will never be accepted from him. And hereafter he will be amongst the losers. And these from amongst Ahlul Qufr or Ghayr Muslimin, they are also divided into a number of different groups. Ummatu Da'wah. They are also divided into a number of different groups. How many groups did we divide Ahlul Islam into? Three. Talatha. Ewa. And how many groups are we going to divide the people of Kufr into? Ithnan? No. More than that. <laughs> more than two, right? Right? No. Many. Different, different, yani, as the Shaykh mentions, طرائق متنوعة ألوان مختلفة في القفر والضلال والباط لكن يمكن إجمالهم في أصناف التالية And these people are divided into a number of different groups all types of variations of different methodologies all types of ways and differences concerning their kufr and their misguidance and their batil and their, 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 their falsehood So this is very important when we talk about da'wah it's very important. If you you want your da'wah to be effective, you want your da'wah, da'wah to be effective, you have to know, you have to know the state, you have to know the type of individual you you are calling. If he's upon innovation, you gotta know what type of group he falls under in his innovation. What type of innovation? Is it bid'a mufassaqa, bid'a mukaffara? If it the type of bid'a that is just fisk that is evil and sin and bad, or the type of bid'ah that takes the person out of Islam. Kufr as well. What type of dalala? What type of kufr? What type of shirk? What type of batal is the person upon? You have to know this to be to allow your da'wah to be effective. Alright? So from amongst those groups, many of them, but it is it is we are able to categorize them and gather them into the following Groups. Number one, for most Ahl al-Kufr, is al-Mulahada. Al-Mulahada. Who are the Mulahada? We will say, in general, the atheists. We will say, in general, the atheists. This is a type of Kufr. This is a type of people of Kufr. Do you think you're going to deal with the atheists on the same level you want to deal with, in the same manner you want to deal with the people of the book? The Jew or the Christian? Huh? Or the Buddhists? No. Who are the mulahada? الذين ينكرون وجود الله ويجحدون ويجحدون ربوبيته كالدحرين قديما الذين ذكروا الله عنهم في القرآن قولهم وقالوا ما هي إلا حياتنا الدنيا 
نموت ونحيا وما يهلقنا إلا الدهر وما لهم بذلك من علم إنهم إلا يظنون The mulahada in general they are those who reject the existence of Allah they are those who reject the existence of Allah they are those who deny the rububiyyah of Allah like the people of old the group who were known as الدهريون whom Allah Ta'ala spoke about them in the Quran and he said about them that they say the only reality is the life of this world that we are living in right now we die and we live and nothing destroys us except what? Time. This is why they're known as Dahariyun. Right? This is why they're known as Dahariyun. <coughs> because they say there's nothing but our life of this world. We die and we live and nothing destroys us except at Dah, time. They have no knowledge of it. They only have conjecture. They only have conjecture. And there are some people who still live like this, right? And you think that the only thing that's killing us is time. And from amongst the modern day people who fall upon this methodology and are from amongst the mulahada, kashuyu'in, like the socialists and communists. Hadithan. Right? Modern day times, communism and socialism is a deen that is a deen of atheism. Alladheena shi'aruhum an la ilaha wal hayatu maadah. The people say there is no ilah, there is no deity. There is no deity that deserves the right to be worshipped. This life is only about materialism, it's about that which is in it. فَأَنْكَرُوا وُجُودُ اللَّهِ وَجَمِيعَ الْأُمُورَ الْغَيْبِيَّةِ كَالْبَعْثِ وَالْحِسَابِ وَالْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكِ so they negate the existence of Allah and they negate all of the affairs of the unseen like resurrection, like being judged, Yawm Qiyamah, like Jannah and Nar and other than that. It is only this physical world that we are in right now, this is the only thing that exists. And they say we believe, our belief system is in what? Three individuals, who are they? Marx, Lenin and Stalin. Karl Marx, Vladimir, I think his name was Lenin, and, and what? John Stalin, right? Stalin or Stalin, however you want to pronounce it. Right? Whom they all got their methodology from? Who? Stalin. Marxism, Leninism, right? This is communism and socialism. Marx was what? Karl Marx was what? A philosopher, a sociologist. A revolutionary in nature. Vladimir Lenin, the same thing. Right? Stalin, the same thing. He's also from that. Right? He's just Asian. Right? And they were from the Russian Soviet uh, atmosphere, whatever. Region. We believe in these three and we, 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 we reject these three. We disbelieve in these three. Allah, Deen, Al Mulkiyatul Khasa. We reject and we disbelieve in Allah 
and we disbelieve in religion, and we disbelieve in a specific class, ruling class of society. There should be no specific ruling class of society. And so this is from the aspect in which some of the Muslims who have taken on this ideology of Marx and Lenin and Stalin and these things, from the revolution, revolutionary aspect of it, what? Al-Mulkiyatul Khasa. We reject a special ruling class that can't be no type of kingship. Right? Royal family, Saudi Arabia, they got to go. Right? Can't have it. The second from us, the class of disbelieving people, are the mushrikun. The mushrikun. وَهُمْ أَهْلُ الْأَوْثَانِ وَالْأَسْنَامِ الَّذِينَ عَبَدُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ غَيْرَهُمْ So wouldn't you think, if we go back to the first class of people, wouldn't you think that there will be a specific way that you have to deal with them? A specific methodology in calling them that will be different than calling the people who say that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is the son of Allah, it's going to be different. And you have to know what these people are upon. You have to know their methodologies in order to call them. Al-Mushrikun are those who worship idols, those who worship statues, those who worship things that human beings have fashioned and created and given them the title of deities. These people who yes, accent, that's the answer. That they believe in the existence of Allah, which is different than the class before them. You see? So the approach to them is going to be different. The approach to the class first is going to, is going to you're going to have to start at what? Yeah, we keep saying we call it a Tawheed, we call it a Tawheed, we call it a Tawheed. Okay, we call it a Tawheed, but in dealing with the different aspects and classes of the people of Kufr, what are we going to, how are we going to call them and what do we call them to? So in the beginning of dealing with the people of the, of the Mulahad, of the atheists, the first thing we got to do is to get them to believe in what? The wujud of Allah Ta'ala. The wujud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our call to them first, before we even start talking about any type of worshipping Allah alone. First we have to establish the existence, the fact that Allah ta'ala exists in their hearts. Hmm? Then the people of shirk, those who they believe or they affirm the existence of Allah ta'ala, what is our job for them? Is it establishing and affirming the existence of Allah Ta'ala? No, it is negation. It is negating. It is doing away with. It is proving false. Those things in, in, in which they have taken as deities besides Allah, or along with Allah, other than Allah. So now we have to prove to them that these things are not worthy of being worshipped. And in order to do that, all of them, both of these particular situations, a person has to have what? Has to have what? Hmm? Knowledge. And this knowledge that, he's, that he has to have has to be what? His sources have to be what? Al-Kitab wa Sunnah. So how is a person claiming to be upon Dao and he doesn't know the Quran? How? Oh. I'm talking about from the heads of the Dao and don't know the Quran. Don't know the Quran like that. Hmm? It's impossible. It's impossible. Because the verses of the Quran have been established. Those things in the Quran have been established. Those clear ayat that establish the falsehood of those things that are worshipped besides Allah Ta'ala. These, the mushrikun, they believe Allah is al-khaliq, al-raziq, al-mun'im, al-mudabbir. لكن جعلوا بينهم وبينهم الوسطاء والشفعاء يدعونهم ويسألونهم ويستغيثون بهم ويصرفون لهم أنوال إبادة. And these people they call on other than Allah, they ask other than Allah, they seek deliverance from other than Allah, they direct their worship to other than Allah. ويعبدون من دون الله ما لا يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ويقولون هؤلاء شفعاءنا هؤلاء شفعاءنا إن الله and that they worship other than Allah, that which would not benefit them or harm them. And they say, these are our intercessors to Allah Ta'ala. Thirdly, is Al-Murtaddun. From the people of Kufr, 
is al murtadun the apostates the people who have apostated they are another class that have to be dealt with their belief their understanding the situation with regard